Hey guys, this is Chris with Live Life Outdoors, and welcome to part 5 of my series on building an AR 308 on a budget. In this video I'll be showing you the install of my Ballistic Advantage barrel and my UTG free float handguard, as well as the gas tube and of course the gas block. Hope you enjoy! Now I went with a uh, Ballistic Advantage uh, barrel and uh, just real quick on Ballistic Advantage, they actually were started in 2008 uh, down in Florida. And uh, as of December of 2014, Aero Precision actually acquired them. So uh, it's kind of cool that, that uh, Ballistic Advantage actually became a majority owned subsidiary by Aero Precision. So uh, you know that they're great. Um, I've done a lot of research. Um, they just seem to make very, very good, high quality parts. Uh, the particular barrel here, I got an 18 inch barrel. Uh, it's made uh, of 4150 chrome molly uh, vanadium. And the coating is actually really nice. It's a uh, QPQ uh, corrosion resistant finish on both the barrel as well as the M4 feed ramps. Uh, the feed ramp extension, excuse me. So, you know, great finish. Um, it, it looks really nice. Now, it did not come dimpled. So I dimpled it myself, um, and I do actually have a video on how to dimple your barrel, so be sure to check that out. So just a, a great, uh, a great uh, barrel. It's 1 in 10 uh, twist on it. Now for the handguard, I went with uh, the UTG Super Slim Free Float uh, rail. Uh, I really like these. They're really good looking. They're extremely light uh, as well. Now these are made in the USA. Um, now, the nice thing is, is it's, it's 13 inches, uh, not too long, not too short. Uh, my gas block will stick out a little bit in front. I don't mind that at all. Um, if you wanted to use the same barrel, uh, same setup I've got, you're going to probably, and if you don't like that uh, gas block hanging out in front, you're probably going to want to do the 15 inch, uh, which it does come in the 15 inch as well. This is not key mod. Um, this is actually their proprietary system on attaching the rails here in the three, six, nine o'clock position and of course it's got the integrated uh, Picatinny rail on top. Uh, very well constructed, very light. I like that a lot. Uh, it's good with low profile gas blocks. Very simple installation and I'll show you how that uh, is done here later in the video. Um, it's got uh, real good anti-rotation tabs here uh, which helps keep things aligned and an extended rail here so it, it once it fits together with the receiver it's a great fit I'm really excited to uh, install this now the first thing you're going to want to do is take the upper receiver and put that in uh, vice blocks and then put that in a vice and what I'm going to do is I've uh, putting on some aeroshell 33 uh, lithium uh, grease on there so a little dab will do you. Obviously you don't want a ton on, but you do want to make sure you get it on there pretty good. And that just prevents it from seizing uh, in the future if ever you need to change it out or anything like that. So it's always a good idea to put some on. Then uh, you take your barrel, and uh, barrels have this little uh, knob here. That actually uh, coordinates with a notch at the top, so you just line that up and put it on in. The UTG handguard has a proprietary barrel nut, so you have to use the one that came with it. it uh, it's not a universal one, so you do need a one that does come with the handguard. Put that on there, and you, you just put it on finger tight. Once you got that on there finger tight, uh, it does have a proprietary uh, wrench attachment too, so you can't just use your general armor's wrench, but it did come with it when I purchased it. And so you're going to want to torque that down to 35 foot-pounds. And kind of a, a lesser known uh, common mistake, I should say, is when it comes to torquing these down, when you have your torque wrench, you actually do want to put your attachment, your uh, wrench on there at 90 degrees. And the reason being, if you're familiar with physics or anything like that, when you have it rotated basically straight like this, this increases the distance that, uh, from the torquing mechanism down at the handle. It makes this longer, so the torque actually is off. It's not a correct torque measurement when you have it like this. When you have it 90 degrees, 
it, it has the actual accurate torquing measurement. Now, uh, in the instructions with the handguard, it does mention you want to put the wrench on the second notch here, not the furthest one out, but the second one. If you put it out here, it'll damage it. So, be aware of that as well. And again, we're going to start this torque at uh, 35 foot pounds. Now, because this is a new receiver, what you're going to want to do is torque it, loosen it, torque it again, loosen it, and torque it again three times. And what that does is actually kind of pre-seasons or pre-stretches the threads. Otherwise, if you just torque it once and go to the range and shoot it a few times, because of the heat, because of uh, the hot cold, hot cold of shooting it, letting it cool, as well as just general wear and tear, it, it does actually loosen up a bit. So by uh, pre-stretching those threads, by torquing it, loosening it three times, you kind of take the guesswork out of it. So I've already done it on this barrel, so this will be the, the final torque that I'll put on there. And there it went, 35 foot-pounds. Now, once you have that on, take your handguard, and this will just be a test fit. And what we're looking for is when you have that on, and it's really snug, which I like, these screw holes here at the top, well at the side, excuse me, I just have my receiver laying down. But these screw holes here need to make sure they line up with the barrel nut because they're, you're actually going to put screws in here. Now if they don't line up, you might need to torque it a little bit further if they're too far forward that is. You might need to torque it a little bit more. Or if it's too far on there, it does come with some spacers that you can actually tighten down. Um, in between the barrel nut and receiver to make sure these line up. This looks pretty good actually so I'm happy with this. It's lined up well. So we'll move on to the next step. So with the barrel nut now correctly torqued we can go ahead and slide on what's called the locking ring. Now this locking ring you want to have facing with this groove, this alignment groove, facing vertical uh, towards the top of the receiver. So you just push that on in and you're all set. Now you can go ahead and move on to the gas tube. Now for the gas block I went with the Yankee Hill Machine low profile gas block. For the gas tube I went with the Spikes Tactical Melanite uh, gas tube. I got this actually at a local uh, gun shop here and I got this actually from Midway USA the gas block. So for installation uh, all you really need to do is just basically remember to find that uh, hole for the gas port there and you line it up with the hole in the gas tube and just, just kind of make sure they're facing in the same direction obviously you can work on the alignment once you're setting the roll plan but so just line them up like so push it on in and then this roll pin hole it's kind of hard to see but basically you can see right there you line up the gas block and the gas tube so there's no obstruction there and that's actually where you're going to put your roll pin so once you get your gas tube lined up and uh, inserted into the gas block, uh, it's time to put in the roll pin. Now there's a lot of different ways that uh, guys like to do this. I've seen some with pliers, some with uh, punches and so forth. Um, what I'm actually going to do is, uh, I don't have a, a bench block, so I'm just going to use this vice block here. Uh, it seems to do pretty well. And uh, I actually made my own little uh, roll pin starter punch here. Uh, just by taking an old uh, large screw and, and drilling a hole down the middle of it and kind of smoothing it out. So it seems to work pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed. Okay, we'll just go ahead and finish that off. Okay, once you get that uh, roll pin flush there, you're, on, you're ready to move on to the next step. And one of the nice things here about this uh, barrel nut is you don't have to worry about any splines or anything like that. Uh, so you don't have to worry about indexing for the gas tube to actually fit into the receiver in a line. Uh, nothing to worry about, you just stick it right on there. 
So we're going to go ahead and feed the gas tube on in with the gas block. And as you can see, it just goes right on in. So I've already dimpled the barrel as I mentioned before. So once I get this lined up, all I need to do is just screw those bolts on into the dimples. I can feel them and there they're seated. Now with the gas tube and gas block installed, you can go ahead and slide on the handguard. So again, it's a little tight when you put it on, which is good in my opinion. Make sure you get it all the way back so that these are all in alignment here. And these uh, rotation, anti-rotational tabs will help line it up as well. So once you have the handguard in place, you can check the alignment of the locking ring under the barrel nut. As you can see, it's a little twisted, which isn't a problem at all because all you do is you take the Allen key or a punch and you just put it in there and line it up. And there you go. The up and down is not a problem but if it's forward or backward too much, then you need to start looking into if you need spacers or need to torque the uh, barrel nut in more. But now that this is lined up, we can go ahead and install the locking screws. There's going to be six, two on the right, two on the left, two on the bottom, and then you're all set. So here's a look of uh, the progress thus far with these installed. Um, quick on the pricing, uh, the handguard I was able to get at cheaperthandirt.com. It was $109.97, and then I had a $10 off coupon, and then about $6.75 shipping, so about $106 and change on the, on the handguard. The barrel I got at SchulerArms.com. Uh, normal, normally for ballistic advantage barrels are around $240. Um, Schuler Arms had it for $144 plus about $7 shipping, so $151 on the barrel. The gas tube I got at a local gun shop, because I like to support local businesses as much as possible. That was about $15.99. And then the gas block I got at Midway USA uh, for about 20 bucks. So uh, next on the list is I'm going to get the bolt carrier group and charging handle installed. And once I do that, I'm actually going to get the headspace checked by a gunsmith. Um, I don't have any gauges and, and frankly don't want to deal with that. I just want to get it checked by a professional gunsmith and I encourage you to do the same. And uh, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to my future videos so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching.